Hey there, you're watching Andy's Fishing Wild Cook. We're in my little boat. Haven't used that for a while. We're up a creek system at the moment. I've got enough stuff to stay overnight. We'll see how we go with that. Kind of re regretting not going to the reef today. The forecast was a bit ho-hum last night and this morning they've changed it. So anyway, a little bit of a late start, but the tides are pretty small and that's why I'm up a creek. So let's get into it. Hee <laughs> hee. First cast of the trip, it is quite late. <laughs> I think it's like midday or something. And the reason I picked this spot here to start is because I saw, I think I've seen four separate barramundi buffs whilst I was getting my gear ready. So yeah, we're in with a good chance here. Yep, oh, that was a hit. It was like the third cast. He missed it. Water is quite dirty. Yeah, I can see the swirl there. All right. Okay, a bit slower this time. Give him a nice, slow, fat target to hit. Oh. Halfway through my cast, he freaked me out. Let's see if we can get him. Don't know what that was, probably a threadfin salmon. Oh, there he goes. Yeah, it's a threadfin, he's working the bank. So if I go over here, we should intercept him. I'm gonna fish two rods again today. They're both samurai cruisers. One's a bait caster and one's a spin rod. I'll show you them a bit later on. And the lures I'm starting off with is a Slim Twitcher 125 in pink and a Plazos Jerk Shad six inch in white. That covers top and bottom. How's that for a perfect backhanded cast? That was a barramundi. That was a nice barramundi. Let's have a go around here. He would have been 70, 80 maybe. Right there, come on. Although he probably won't come back. He's probably had his lunch. The pink's not doing it. So I'm just gonna go a little bit more natural. Cause there's plenty of fish here. Just They're just not hitting my lure. They're, they're not, yeah, they're not interested. So. We'll see how we go. There we go. I think that's a 145 slim twitcher. Oh, just had a look at there. Could have been a barramundi. Yep, got him. Oh, barramundi. I wasn't paying attention at all there. I don't know what I was looking at. <clears throat> nice little guy. Took a long time. That's probably an hour I've been fishing, maybe longer. Let's see if we can lift this guy in. Actually, no, we'll use the net. Come on, little guy. There you go. Oh, so good. Let's see how long he is. He is 51 centimeters. Hey. Eh? Beautiful little fish. And I'm fishing the good spots and he came from middle of nowhere here. Hey, off you go, you're too small. Bye bye, there you go. I want something I can eat for sushi as well. Those guys, yeah, not so keen on sushi, those guys. So I'll just show you the rod I got that fish on. It's a Samurai Cruisers, five foot nine, fast action, 16, 10 to 16 pound. It's actually a four piece so I can travel with it. Very nice rod. I love these things. And then I've got a yeah, Abu low profile reel on there. I think that's 30 pound braid. The reason I wear white shirts is because the solar radiation hits the white and reflects, but you don't want that in a buff. And I've just got these atomic buffs. They're black and you don't see too many black buffs. The reason they're good is because the sun's usually not coming horizontal, it's coming straight down. So they don't get hot, but the black, um, covers up that little gap below your sunglasses and it's just so much better on your eyes. I'll tell you what, this material is silky smooth. <laughs> oh, it feels, oh, it feels like the most incredible nice bed sheets. Woo. Let's try it on. Ah. 
and it's actually really cool. It actually feels like the air is blowing through here. Ooh, I like these new buffs. There you go, I changed to a more natural colour. And yeah, within about 15 casts, I got one. That's uh, Atomic Slim Twitcher 140 in, I think it's Pilchard. Don't quote me on that one, colour. Let's see what else we can get along here. Oh, I just saw a barramundi. He was just sitting out here. Oh, and that's him. Oh, he just had a hit. Oh, he was just sitting right out here, just relaxing with his tail up in the air. And we've just drifted over him and I've missed a strike. Yep. Oh, <laughs> He hit me fast. I thought he was off there for a second. Yeah, that's how fast he hit me. Oh, that's cool. Seeing a couple, getting a couple. Come in, little buddy. There you go. Oh, wet everything. Wish they wouldn't do that. Oh, this guy's probably right on 50. I'm not even going to measure him. I'll just let him go, hey? Off you go. There he goes. Beautiful. Oh, got him, got him, yes. Oh, that was such a subtle take. What have we got? Oh, a stain on the bottom. I think it's a cod. I've got the rod everywhere. Yep, looks like a cod. Oh, that was... <laughs> no wonder it was a subtle take. Ah, oh, black spot. I wonder if we'll see if he's big enough. That could be could be dinner. Hmm. Okay. They need to be 38 centimeters, and I reckon he he feels like he goes 38. Let's see. Oh, come on, stay on the map. In America, you guys know these as groper or grouper. We call them cod in Australia, and they're actually pretty darn good eating. They've got a really white, soft meat. Let's get a measurement on him. I reckon he will go 38. He looks like he will. He is 43 centimeters. Beautiful cod, hey? So I've just cut his throat, and he's, he's going all white, which is normal. They tend to change color when they're, they're dead. Sometimes they go bright colours and sometimes they go less bright. And I'll give you an update of the boat later on, um, tonight or sometime, uh, about the carpet and everything else that I've done to it in the past past year or so. And I'll put him straight on ice. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. That'll stiffen him up nicely and then I can fill him and do whatever I want later on. I very often fish with one lure, but... I also fish with two lures on two different rods and today I changed to the Slim Twitcher with a different colour here and after probably an hour and a half of nothing I've got three fish on this so yeah there's a tip for you. I've seen a few big crocs in this river but today's the first time I saw a two metre, a little small one, his head was only about that long which is cool but that means they're breeding so every time I Put my hand over the side like this. I'm always paying attention. Make sure nothing's coming up underneath me. And I don't know whether it's the material on this buff or well it has to be the material. <laughs> it feels really cool. Like I'm used to wearing cotton buffs. Oh there goes a fish. I just spooked him. See that puff of dirt? Um, I don't know if the line hit him or the lure spooked him. But yeah we just went right past him. Um, yeah the buff and this new material is, yeah, really nice. Oh, I'm spooking a lot of fish today. Like if they were switched on, that, that puff of cloud, that would have been a fish or at least a strike. Not just me spooking a fish. Oh, 
Oh, got him. Oh, that's a good hit. Oh, jeez. Oh, where's the motor? Where's the motor? Where's the fish? I think he's off the motor. Oh, I dropped him. That was a good fish. That was a good fish. I didn't have time to set the hook properly there. Oh, I just came out of here. There won't be another one in there. That thump when he hit it was so hard. I heard him. It's like... <sighs> and how fast? While I'm motoring further up, I'll just show you um, the issues with the carpet. Uh, not the carpet, the foam. Um, it's actually lasted quite well. It's got a few marks in it. But I think it's been like a year and a half, two years now. And really the only issue for me is it peels up. And what the issue is, is the glue's come off the back of this. But it's still really adhered to the actual boat. So, yeah. It was cheap to do, and it's lasted a while. My, my advice would be, if you're gonna do this, put a bead of silicon around all the edges, because, yeah, most of these haven't lifted up. Um, and just, yeah, stop anything getting in there. I've got the electric on autopilot, so that'll do its thing. Let me show you the batteries. So I end up getting two lithium batteries from iTech World. We've got a cranking one, which is 1,420 cold cranking amps. You can start a bus with that thing. Um, and this is my deep cycle. I think it's a 100 amp hour lithium. So they're both lithiums. It's a little dubious. Um, I've had lithiums for a while now and I cannot fault them. Both of these batteries have been sitting in this shed for three months or maybe even four months since I last filmed with this boat. And I tried to put this one on charge, wouldn't take charge. This one here, as soon as I turned the key, motor started. So, yeah, lithiums, great way to go. Oh, got it, yes. Oh. Oh, once again, just didn't, didn't expect it. Oh. Oh. Careful under the boat. Oh, I've got to get this electric up. There we go, perfect. Oh, another barramundi. Oh, that was like my, I don't know, sixth, seventh cast in there. Just, I don't know, they just surprised me today. This one's got a, a dark tail, not a yellow tail. That quite often indicates they've been in fresh water. Oh, I've got a feeling we're gonna get a bigger one up here. There's um, a couple of spots that I know quite well. Beautiful. Always got that orange tongue and a really nice purple sheen on the top of their body. Hey, off you go, buddy. There you go. Woohoo! Oh, I'm hoping for a bigger one. Ooh, I was just about to talk to the camera and a fish just buffed over there. So would you believe it? The rock that I thought was these rocks wasn't wasn't the rock that I was fishing before so yeah there's two patches of rocks here and we're gonna catch a fish here I'm pretty darn sure um, yeah it's been that long since I've been up this creek I forgot that there was two sets of rocks anyway I reckon we'll get a fish surely there's got to be a fish there Oh, now we're stuck in the oysters. I've got my lure stuck right in the good spot and I can't reach it. Oh, I think an oyster's closed on it. There we go, perfect. No chance of this. Oh man, why'd I mess that up? Can't believe I didn't get a fish on that spot. I think maybe because I had too high expectations. I didn't even get a bite. Crazy. We're off to find a camp spot. Um, yeah, there's a couple little islands that we'll, we'll have a look at. May have to go a little further. Um, tomorrow, I don't know, we um, we may fish somewhere else. Oh, there's a sea snake. <laughs> See a lot of sea snakes in the rivers here. But yeah, let's find somewhere nice to cook up or prepare the fish. 
and yeah, sleep for the night. Beautiful place, this. Very nice. I told myself that maybe he ain't worth it. Too bad I hate advice. Cause out of sight and out of mind is perfect. It's so hard to decide. Could be our spot. We've got a little island here. Bit of a channel on this side. So yeah, water's water's not too dirty. We're um, very sheltered. We've got yeah mainland over here. We've got island over here. I think the wind's going to swing around to the north. So yeah, I think this could be our spot. Woo! The reason I've gone into, we're in five and a half meters now, is I want to put the squid light out tonight. Water's, yeah, a little bit green, but we'll give it a shot. There's the island. Yep, right there. Beautiful. So for dinner, we're going to make sushi rolls with raw cod, but marinated in something. <laughs> I've got the uh, the rice cooking pot, 200 mils of sushi rice and 300 mils of water. I like to cook rice with the absorption method and mm, it's going to be right on sunset again. There's the sun there. We got about oh, probably 15 minutes before it hits the horizon and then about another 10 or so minutes of, of nice daylight. So we'll eat before dark, but we're not going to beat the sunset. <laughs> Damn it, I just figured out I forgot my avocados. I've got like three of them in the fridge at home. Anyway, we'll make do with what we got. Now, you want to chop the ingredients in the same order I am. Otherwise, you could have contamination problems. And it looks like my cucumber was frozen. Oh! I had it in the fridge last night and yeah, looks like it got too cold. Take out the seeds. Now it's time for the cod. We'll um, just take a fillet off like here, off one side but only the top half. That makes it really easy and we're not going to get any contamination. That's why I did all the other in ingredients first. So there I've deliberately avoided the, the rib cage area and we've got a nice clean fillet. The fish in a bowl and then add some sesame oil. Nice big helping. Just marinated in that for a little while. Give that a real good mix around. Oh, and the rice is done. Perfect timing. We've got a little bit of white left. Let's have a look. Right there, look at that. Sun hasn't actually set yet, so we're doing all right. Let's have a look how the rice went. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Look at that. Give it a bit of a fluff. It's not the right tool for fluffing, but anyway. Yep, no moisture left. Perfect. In a bowl, I like to put in some wasabi. That's a nice, come on, there you go, nice big chunk, a little bit more. A nice splash of soy. Give that a mix around. And that's our dipping sauce then. Before I use the rice, I'm going to put a little bit of rice wine vinegar in there. That makes the rice sticky. Give that a 
to around. If you're gonna do this on your boat or camping or wherever, um, make the rice beforehand. You don't have to make it on the boat. I just, yeah, I had a different plan and then the plan changed and now I'm on the boat making sushi rice. Let's see how fast we can assemble a sushi roll because <laughs> it is getting a little bit dark. Still, still plenty of light, but yeah. It is getting that because that rice has the vinegar in it, it's behaving itself very well. Yeah, get a bit of carrot in there, some cucumber that is coated really well. In sesame oil, look at that, perfect size. Forget how to do this. Okay, that's working. Too much rice, I think. We got it. We got it. Just a little bit of moisture on the back here. One nice sushi roll. I'll just quickly make the other one. It's actually a little bit brighter than what it looks like. There you go. That's that's about how bright it is. So yeah, just put you over there, and I'll see you after I finish rolling this one. Mm -mm -mm. Two mega fat juicy sushi rolls. To cut sushi, you just want to wet that knife a little bit. Just a bit of water. And let's see how well I did. If they cut well. I've done a good job. Oh yeah, they're cutting. Knife will cut. Got you in the wrong spot again. You're sort of facing into the sunset there. Let's um, turn you around and show you what dinner looks like. And you know what I just forgot? I've got Kewpie mayo there. It's supposed to be inside the sushi roll. Oh, I'll just, I'll put some on top. I'm trying to do too many things at once, but Oh, it's got that nice sushi nori smell. Okay, there we go. I've got my mountain of sushi again. <laughs> oh, I do like a big, big pile of sushi. And just to finish off, a bit of Kewpie mayo. Just a little squirt on a bunch of them. Mm -mm -mm. There we go. All the ones I can reach. <laughs> Ooh, let's try it. So we made it before it was dark. Just. <laughs> Oh man, here you go. The first thing I can taste there is the kewpie mayo. Then I've got the crunch of the carrot and a little bit of the cucumber. The cucumber was a little bit on the soft side. The fish is extremely mild. I can probably taste more the, um, the sesame oil rather than like the fish flavor. Let's try one with a bit of, a bit of soy and wasabi. So it is getting a little bit dark. With the Kewpie Mayo, soy and wasabi, primo. Mm -mm. That is good. Mm. I think I told you everything I was going to tell you, show you today. Um, I'm still going to put the squid light out, but I'm going to finish eating, yeah, my mountain of sushi. <laughs> um, so I'll see you with the squid light on. Um, I'll set the tunnel tent up, but you won't see that. Anyway, I'll see you in a bit. For me, it's about my own personal journey, learning how to be more deeply at home in the wild. So I've managed to get some, um, yeah, a phone reception here, which is really cool. Tonight is the premiere of Australia Alone TV series. And I've applied twice to be on it. They haven't wanted me. Ooh, that sounded like a dolphin. Oh. So I'm actually, well, sort of doing what they're doing whilst watching the show that is just starting on, t on SBS TV. Um, I'd like to have the opportunity to do it one day, so we'll see how we go. Oh my God. I'll um, probably keep, keep applying. Anyway, I'm going to get back to the I'm show. Doing this So this is actually one of the very few places that I sleep on a boat that I can get phone reception. Uh, anyway, I, I watched, finished watching that first episode. Hmm, I wonder why they chose those people instead of me. <laughs> oh, I don't think they're gonna make it. Not the first three that, yeah, I don't know. We've got a couple of little fish around the light. We've got a, a garfish near the top. 
and some little little flighty ones down the bottom possibly hardy heads maybe herring or something no squids turned up yet but it's only like quarter past eight so i'll let it go another hour Okay, I've got the tunnel tent set up. Yeah, yeah, hard to see it there. Let's let's see if my little fairy lights are still working. Woohoo! <laughs> they still work. That's so cool. I haven't touched the boat in like three months, and um, these are probably I'd say over a year old now. Same batteries. Yeah, they they're great. For anyone that's interested in the tunnel tent, I'll show it to you in the morning a little bit better. And I'll just put a little link, like um, uh, episode number here in a thumbnail, and you can check it out. That's probably the first time, or when I when I first introduced it. It's a pretty pretty cool idea. It just um, keeps the moisture off me. Uh, the wind still sort of comes through here, which I quite like. And yeah, the um, the rain, yeah, it's yeah keeps me dry. That's the main thing out here. I'll have another look at that squid light. There's been a lot of um, little garfish turn up at first there was only one but now there's like 20 or 30 or so but I haven't seen these squid yet so. there's a baby sea snake trying to get on the boat here <laughs> oh I don't know about if I like this here he comes he's coming right at us there's a sea snake right there little baby one that's a sea snake oh I don't know how I feel about that Oh, fish just about jumped on me. That's a bit ordinary. <laughs> He's only tiny, but it's a sea snake. They're ten times more venomous or more deadly than than land snakes. Um, yeah, I just hope he doesn't come on board. Hmm, first sea snake that's come into the light. I actually saw some pretty big ones today, but yeah, they just take a breath and they go back down. But this guy, he seems to be, well, he's obviously attracted to the light. Hmm, Let's see if I can get another shot of him. Nothing else interesting turned up tonight. There was plenty of little garfish. That sea snake was pretty interesting. But I'm going to go to bed. Oh, got my bed set up here. And there's a little bit of a lapping noise, but yeah, it's not too bad at all. I've definitely had much worse night's sleep. It's a little tiny breeze and it's yeah, perfect temperature. So yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.